Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can choose the best settings when you're recording something using OBS or open broadcaster software. This video focuses on the best settings for recording and not for streaming. So if you're trying to record something on your machine, you have come to the right place. Now, one thing to call out is there's no magical setting that'll work for everyone. It's not a one size fits all. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through what the different settings mean. So depending on your machine, if you're on a high-end machine or a low-end machine, you can make the choices to what settings work the best in your scenario. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start simple and then we're gonna go more complex and we're gonna go through each and individual setting so your videos look fantastic. All right, well, what are we waiting for? Why don't we jump into it? So here I am on my machine, and one other thing I wanna call out before we jump into this is in the description, I also have an overview of the content I'm going through, so if you also wanna read it or see any of the sources of the information that I'm sharing, feel free to look at the description in the video. So here I am in OBS. This is the latest version that I have installed, and what we're gonna start with is, I mentioned we would start simple and then we'd go more complex. So this assumes you already have OBS installed, and we're gonna just start with a wizard because this is the easiest way to make sure that you have the best settings. If you click on the tools menu, you'll see this drop down, and there's an option that says auto configuration wizard. Let's go ahead and click on that. What'll happen is when you click on auto configuration wizard, that'll pop up a prompt and it gives two different options. One says optimize for streaming. The other says optimize just for recording. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we're focused on recording. So let's go ahead and select that option and click on next. Now what it says is it has the resolution. I have my resolution set to 2560 by 1440. And underneath that, it has something called FPS or frames per second. And you have a few different options. One of them is either 60 or 30 frames per second, so it's variable. Uh, but what you do is you indicate which one you prefer. So here I prefer 60 when possible, or you uh, simply pref uh, prefer high resolution. If you're recording games, you probably wanna have a preference for frame rate over quality. If you're recording something like spreadsheets or a browser window, you probably prefer resolution over a uh, high frame rate. So that's how you can decide which one you wanna choose here. In this case, I'm simply gonna go with the higher frame rate. You could also choose a constant frame rate, but I would always go for the highest possible and then only fall back if you're unable to achieve that higher frame rate. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this one and then we're gonna go to next. And what this does is you'll see that the wizard selected different encoder, uh, different quality, um, it selected all these for me and I'm simply applying these settings. And now the OBS has chosen settings that'll work well in my scenario. In general, this will work well for most people, but if you wanna get into the nitty gritty and ensure that you have the best, absolute best quality, we're gonna have to go into the settings and we're gonna have to tweak them uh, so we really get fantastic looking video. Okay, so now we went through the wizard. Let's go into a more complicated scenario where you have a little bit more control over what your video looks like. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the file menu up on top and then we're gonna go down this menu and we're gonna click on settings. Now, right now we only care about the recording quality. And so you have all these different pivots on the side here. The one we care about is called output. So let's go ahead and click on that. And by default, we're in an output mode called simple. So this is a simple view. And so we're gonna walk through this next. We're not interested in streaming, so we're gonna go straight down to the recording section here, and you have a few options. I, I have my recording path. I'm gonna just leave that to what the default is. Now the next thing you have is you could select the recording quality. By default, it's set to high quality. You could also set it to indistinguishable quality, which is even better, but the file size is larger. And then the very best one is called lossless quality. Now lossless quality is basically recording it as it is. There's no compression there. And so that'll be an extremely large file size. In fact, when I choose that, it warns me that if I go with that, it'll be about seven gigabytes of disk space per minute. Now that's a lot of space, so I'm not gonna select that. High quality is an appropriate one to go with to ensure a good recording quality quality, but you could also go with indistinguishable as well. Now, in terms of the recording format, if you click on that menu, there are several different options in here, ranging from FLV all the way down to M3U8. How do you choose which one you should go with? Well, there, there's definitely uh, an importance to defaults, and FLV is set as the default in, within OBS. 
Uh, so I would recommend going with FLV. This is Adobe Flash format and uh, this is the one I would recommend going with. Now you have other formats like MP4, MOV. These are probably more recognizable. The nice thing about these file formats is you could just drop them into video editing software and you could just work with them as is. Now the downside is if I click on MP4 or MOV, you notice this little warning message that appears at the bottom. Basically what it says is if your OBS shuts down for any reason, for example, maybe the power goes out or your app crashes, you'll lose your entire file. So imagine that you're playing a game for about an hour and then 50 minutes in, the OBS ends up crashing. You, you will have lost your entire recording session if you go with MP4 or MOV. So I would recommend against using these file formats. MKV, this is typically used for DVDs when you have chapters and menus. A TS is broadcast media file, I wouldn't recommend that. And then M3 UA, this tends to be for playlists. So in general, FLV is the format I would recommend. And you can very easily uh, remux this over to an MP4 or MOV file when you're done. The nice thing about FLV is if OBS crashes for whatever reason, whatever you recorded up to the point that OBS crashed, you'll be able to preserve that. And let me do a quick example. So I'm just gonna select that as my recording format. We're gonna go ahead and click OK. And now I'm gonna start recording. And what I'm gonna do, I'll do just a quick demo here. I'll open up this app called the Office app. Uh, this is what I work on at work. I work at Microsoft. If you search for Office, you'll have it on your Windows 10 machine. Uh, with the Office app, you get Word, Excel, PowerPoint for free. Okay, so enough talk about the Office app. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna close OBS and it says OBS is currently active. All streams recordings will be shut down. Are you sure? Yes, let's go ahead and do that. Now, the nice thing here is I'm gonna open up my videos and we're gonna click on this video that I just recorded when OBS was interrupted. So what you'll see is the thing that I just recorded, even though I interrupted and closed OBS, my recording is preserved up until the point that I close OBS. When I click on yes, that's when the recording stops. So it's a little bit of extra insurance in case OBS fails for any reason, and that's why we wanna use FLV. Now what's nice is with an, uh, with an FLV uh, file, uh, you might be wondering, well, hey, I can't bring that into my video editor. They have an option if you click on the files uh, menu, the file menu, go to Remux Recordings. I could go ahead and select that file that I just recorded and it'll switch it over to an MP4 and I'll just click on Remux. It goes almost instantaneously. And then here, if I go back to my video folder, you'll see here's an, FL, here's an MP4 file. So the nice thing about uh, the FLV is uh, it gives you extra insurance against crashes of OBS and it just requires one extra step then where you quickly remux an FLV to an MP4. It's just an extra step, but it's a little bit of insurance that you get. That's why I would always recommend that as your recording file type. Okay, so let's go back to settings. Uh, we've walked through a few different things here. We've, we've walked through the recording quality. We've walked through what recording format you could choose. The next thing that we have is the encoder. And you're, here too, you're confronted with many different options for the encoder. Which one should you choose? Well, let me walk through why you would choose each one of these. With the first option here, Software X264, what that means is this is your processor or your CPU, which is doing all the encoding of, your, uh, of whatever you're recording on your computer. Let's say that you're playing a computer game. Your CPU will probably be working pretty hard to make sure that it renders the game on your screen. So if you choose X264 for your encoding, that means not only does it have to render your game on the screen, but then it also has to encode the video file. This could be pretty processor intensive. If you have a pretty beefy machine or if you have a powerful computer, this may work well. However, if you have a lower end machine, you probably don't wanna go with this option because it'll place too much load on your CPU and your recording likely won't look so good. Another option here is hardware, and you have two different hardware options. One is NVENC, which is a NVIDIA hardware encoding. The other one is QSV, uh, which stands for QuickSync, or it's Intel QuickSync. 
Now this one, if you have a NVIDIA graphics card, it's using uh, encoding as part of the graphics card. This won't have any hit on your CPU, and this tends to be a pretty good option to go with. Hardware QSV, this is an integrated graphics card by Intel. Uh, you could also rely on that to do your encoding. In terms of preference and what I would go with, if you have a very powerful machine, I'd recommend starting out with X264 to see how that looks. If your CPU usage is too high, I would monitor how much CPU you're using, but if it's very very high. I would use NVENC or the NVIDIA encoder next. And as kind of your last resort, I would use the Intel QuickSync uh, encoder. And depending on which ones you have, you may not have the NVIDIA one, you might only have the Intel one. In that case, I would simply fall back to this one. So that's how I would choose which one of these encoders uh, to select. Okay, so that's just the simple output screen. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go even more complex here if you really want full control over your recording. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into output mode and we're gonna go down to advanced. Now we're getting a little more advanced here and what we're gonna do is once again, we're interested in recording, so we're gonna click on the recording pivot. Now what we see here is you have a lot of the same settings and I have it set to, we're gonna go down and select FLV. And here, once again, the settings depend on which encoder I choose. So I'm gonna start from the one I prefer and go to the one I least prefer, and I'm gonna tell you which settings are the best and why they're the best. So let's click on X264. Once again, this is your processor or the CPU that's doing the encoding. Now what's interesting here is the rate control, and you're gonna have a few different options within here. CBR, this stands for constant bit rate. This tends to be good for streaming if you're on Twitch. Uh, however, if you want the best possible recording, this is not a good option to go with. Same with average bit rate and variable uh, bit rate. Average bit rate isn't really good for all that much unless you wanna do a quick and dirty encode. Variable, uh, variable bit rate, this tends to be better for streaming as well. However, if you wanna ensure the best and constant level of quality throughout your video, you wanna choose CFR, which stands for constant rate factor. This is the best one to go with. A quick word on why CBR is not a good option and why it's good for streaming. In streaming, you tend to have a set amount of bandwidth and you wanna take advantage of all that bandwidth uh, regardless of kind of what you're streaming. However, when you're recording, bandwidth isn't as much of an issue. So you wanna get whatever bit rate you can get to make sure you have the best quality. So CFR uh, is the best one to go with. In terms of the number down here, uh, the recommendation is that you go with a level that's between 15 and 25. The lower the number, the higher the quality. The higher the number, the worse the quality. However, anywhere between 15 and 25 is a good number to go with. The default is 23, so I tend to stick with the default. All these other settings are not critical and you don't have to change them, but this should ensure good quality. Now there's also, the next thing that we're gonna look at is the NVIDIA uh, NV encoder. Uh, we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna just walk through the, the best setting here. Um, here too, you also have rate control. CBR, we went over that already, that's constant bit rate. Uh, that tends to be good for streaming, but not for getting the best quality recording. VBR as well, the variable bit rate. And then lossless, well this is gonna be extremely good quality, but it's gonna be a massive file size, uh, so we don't even wanna consider that. So here, this one, uh, it's called CQP or constant quantization parameter. This is the best one to go with. And for your CQ level, you wanna choose something between 15 and 25. By default, it's set to 20. In terms of other settings that you have on here, uh, the preset is set to quality. That's gonna be, that's gonna be a pretty good output. Um, and another setting that you have here too is profile high. I would just leave that set to the default if you decide to use the NVIDIA uh, N encoder, NV encoder. Now the last one we're gonna look at is the quick sync. And what we wanna do is for target usage, we're gonna go with quality. Uh, for profile, we're gonna go with high. And then in terms of the rate control, what I recommend here, here too, we wanna go with the one that ensures the best quality. We don't necessarily care about a limited amount of bit rate. So CBR, VBR, uh, those are kind of out of the question. And the ones that we prefer to use is LAICQ, ICQ or CQP. Now what these will do is this is basically a constant rate factor and it'll ensure quality throughout the entire video. So any one of those settings will do and then you could leave these settings uh, where they are.
Okay, so what I wanted to do is just run through how to set the best quality settings in OBS when you're recording, not when you're streaming. What you could do as well is in the description, I have an overview of what the best settings are. I also have links to materials that give more of the rationale and more of the justification for why those are the best settings. If you're interested, however, you can also just look in the description, go with those settings, and you'll have very good output in your video recordings. Anyway, if you watch this video and you notice an improved uh, video quality in your recordings, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you have any other ideas, any other questions that you have that you wanna see me cover in future videos, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.